The world war that took place almost 1,000 years ago was caused by a love triangle. The love triangle leads to disease, the creation of the Amazon lily, and a dark war that pollutes the world in strange ways for centuries to come. The love triangle peaked with a wedding, which will be revealed to be the specific catalyst for the war. This union is represented with the number 88 by Oda, which is why we always see the number 16, 8 plus 8. The union was either interrupted, starting the conflict, or went through only to cause tensions within the royal families that led to war shortly after. This union is intended by Oda to embody duality and the interactions between two polar opposites. This theme is centrally reflected in One Piece with the sun and the moon, but plenty of other instances and metaphors occur throughout, such as fire and ice. The breakup of the union leads to rebirth, triggering the will of the two sovereigns to reincarnate within people who inherit their will. The only living beings to witness, thus have knowledge of these events, are the ancient trees, the oldest of which being named the Tree of Knowledge. That said, we do see a tree in Zo with a whale coming out of it. Whitebeard is epitomized as a father figure, and he has whales for ships, potentially signifying the trees fathered the old world by migrating seeds between east and west. This would explain their frustration with the red line. Joy Boy is shown to be deeply connected to trees and is tied to a symbol that has undeniable resemblance to whale tails. The whales being restricted by the red line might be symbolic of Joy Boy wanting to be free also and tie into his ultimate dream. Today we're going to be going all the way from 1200 years in the past up to the present day, detailing how the Void Century began, including where the Gorosei came from, how the war played out, why the Gorosei did what they did, and lastly, how the Void Century still affects the One Piece world to this day. Now, we just broke 5k subs, so make sure to hit that sub button to get us closer to that next milestone, and consider dropping into our community and seeing what's going on at the front line of the One Piece Theory verse links below. But anyway, back to the theory. In the world of One Piece, the Void Century is a mysterious period in history that spans a hundred years. This era is shrouded in secrecy with very few records or information available about what actually transpired during that time. However, it is widely believed to have been a time of great upheaval and significant events that shaped the world as we know it today in the series. Here's what we know and kind of can speculate about the Void Century. So the lost history, the world government, the ruling authority in the One Piece world has actively suppressed knowledge about the events of the Void Century. They have gone to great lengths to eradicate any historical records, poneglyphs, which are ancient stone tablets, or oral traditions that might shed light on what truly happened during that time. For example, when Clover tried to name the ancient kingdom, they assassinated him. One of the key mysteries surrounding the Boy's Century is the existence of ancient weapons. These were particularly significant and immensely powerful, and are believed to be crafted during the era. It's also believed that they played a pivotal role in the events of the Void Century and may hold the key to understanding how it started or how it ended. The Will of D is a recurring theme in One Piece and is believed to be connected to the events of the Void Century. Individuals with the initial D in their names often possess a strong sense of freedom and a rebellious nature, and they seem to be linked to the ancient history in some profound way that we're yet to have confirmed. It is widely speculated that there was a powerful civilizational kingdom during the Void Century that stood against the world government, or what was going on before the world government. This kingdom may have possessed knowledge or technology that posed a great threat to the authority of, for example, Emu or the previous government, which ultimately led to its own downfall as the world government and subsequently the cover-up of the history. Another enigmatic figure associated with the Void Century is Joy Boy. His true identity and intentions remain a mystery, but he is mentioned in connection with ancient promises and prophecies, suggesting that he played a significant role in the events of that era. It is hinted that the Void Century was marked by a massive conflict known as the Great War, or Ancient War. This war likely involved the Ancient Kingdom, the World Government, and possibly all the other factions globally, and it may have resulted in the widespread devastation and reshaping of the world. Despite lack of concrete information, the mystery of the Void Century serves as a driving force behind much of the plot in One Piece. As the Straw Hat Pirates and other characters progress, we uncover some of the truths, but we can theorize and speculate deeper as to what actually happened and where the story's going. Now, let's start 
before the void century, roughly 1200 years ago. When Robin recited the alabaster poneglyph to Crocodile, she lied about its contents. Instead telling Crocodile, the poneglyph discussed the hero of Atreia 1200 years ago, Mamudi. This name is particularly significant now as we saw Emu referring to themselves as Mu. Mu fits in Mamudi. Lily is closely connected to Emu, and the hero of Atreia was said to conquer and form what we now call Alabaster. Roughly 200 years after the conquering of Alabaster, Zunisha was born, with many speculating this is about the same time people descended from the moon. This part of history is likely centered around Jaya and Skypea, where mink, ninja, and pirates had a flourishing alliance epitomized by the Golden City. It may even be that the hero of Atreia, after conquering Alabaster, wanted to move up Paradise and conquer Jaya, etc. as well. This would fit well with the fact that the pirates, ninja, and mink generally are enemies of the world government so far in the story. This is very possibly Emu's ascension to global power. The war might have stemmed from prejudice against races either across a certain part of the globe or the entire globe, which seems to have occurred between the humans of the world and the less human-looking species. We have that in the present One Piece storyline with the majority of humans living in paradise and the majority of non-humans living in the new world, which is a far more unsafe environment than paradise. Despite the difference in appearance, Oda expressed blood can be transfused, for example from fishman to human, implying human physiology is intrinsically linked to other so-called species in the One Piece world, or perhaps suggesting that fishmen were once human, or originated from humans at the very least. We do know that mixing lineage factors is a part of the current world government's experiments. Possibly before, but most likely around this time, the Gorosei were formed. It's looking it was like it was one member from each region of the world, with the only exception being Fishman Island. Which is very interesting considering Fishman Island is ruled by Neptune, a character named after a planet just like the other Gorosei. Furthermore, it gets crazier when you think about what Vegapunk just said in 1113. The world will sink into the ocean. So the one place where there is no Gorosei origin just happens to be the place the world is heading currently. Strain. But what about the other regions of the Blue Planet? Well, Mars is definitely connected to Sky Pier. In the previous few chapters, we see him dealing with threats in the sky. York is shown holding a bazooka, which has symbolized Uranus's firepower since Sky Pier. Mars looks like Gamfall, Kami or God of Skypea. Additionally, the yokai form Mars takes is an Itsunadi, which is a bird serpent. Finally, the design of the character matches the style found on the murals on the moon, which also depict people descending down to the blue planet. There's not much to go off so far, but we could speculate that the Kami role was passed to Gamfall and not Mars. And because of this, it created a bitterness in Mars, which led him to join the opposing forces. Lastly, and very interestingly, we see a sickness at Skypea known as Tree Fever. So bear that in mind and you'll see how it adds up in just a second. Saturn's big appearance was during the Egghead arc. This arc features the South Blue predominantly, as well as characters such as Bonnie, Ginny and Kuma. Saturn connects to these characters on a personal level, seen through flashbacks throughout the arc which involved Saturn at God Valley, Saturn's involvement with Ginny, and resulting in Saturn's connection with Bonnie later on down the line. Furthermore, the unique pattern to Saturn is flame markings, echoing what we learned about the eternal flame and flame energy. Similar to Mars, we don't have much information to go off, but it's very possible that Saturn was a ridiculed or failed scientist. We have seen hints of him using and adapting other people's technology. And what's also interesting again is Saturn's appearance was tied to flashbacks about Sapphire Scale, another strange disease. Topman has a very distinct pattern on his hokey form, which is reminiscent of what we see with Law's character design. The name Topman might be a reference to the North, as North sits at the top in orientation, for example on a map. The North Blue is often associated with snow and cold, and boars are known to live in snowy climates. 
top man Walkery has the word war in his name, and the Vinsmokes, who hail from the North Sea, just happen to be the most military based faction in the series, which suggests to me Top Man potentially lost a war or at least lost military might to the Vinsmokes in the North. This might have been his reason for joining the opposing forces. But don't forget, the North is also home to a deadly disease known as Amber Lead Syndrome. That's three Gorosei and three diseases so far. Now on to Nazdro. I think we can all assume that Nazdro ties to Wano, which is found in the New World. Smiles featured heavily in Wano, possibly indicating another Gorosei connection to another disease. He wears traditional Japanese samurai dress, and also the suffix of his name is Juro, which is what we saw with Zoro's alias in Wano. This particular Gorosei is depicted as the burning horse, which is often tied to betrayal in myth, leaving us with Jew Peter, who I believe is connected to Alabasta and thus Paradise. Fans have always noticed how this particular member of the Gorosei seems different from the others and seems to have a little less knowledge, so leading some to speculate that he's the newest member of the Gorosei. In the upcoming video, I'll go into more detail about how I believe Jupiter was Lily's younger brother and when the crown was passed down to him, he, he was shunned or not accepted in the same way that Lily was. People were more adamant that they wanted to find out what happened with Lily. I believe this led to another bitterness and that is what led Jupiter to defect Alabaster and join the Gorosei. Alternatively, we may see a betrayal from him. He may be there to get revenge for Lily, but I guess we'll find that all out in good time. Another interesting connection between Jupiter and Alabaster, he was said to be a worm. Not a serpent, nothing like that, but a worm. Alabaster is very tied to serpents, and a worm could be considered a lesser serpent. So again, this would back up the idea that the younger brother was not not the true snake that potentially Lily was. And fascinatingly, the tunnels do connect to that part of the world, the ones that end up in the hot springs. The hot springs that connect to this part of the world might be a nod from Oda about previous tunnels that were made in Alabaster or around Alabaster by this giant worm. Remember the name of the sickness that afflicted Nami during this arc? The Five Day Disease. Five Gorosei, five diseases. Mike drop. There's two regions of the One Piece world I have left out here, which are the East and the West Blue. Can you guess why? It's because this is the start and end point of Roger's journey, marked by Dawn Island and Laugh Tale. In other words, Joy Boy is likely from one of these places, Emu slash Lily is from the other. Laugh Tale is said to be located in the far west. O'Hara is located in the west and some of the children there share Luffy's smile. The age of the tree of knowledge at O'Hara is stated as 5,000 years old, so no doubt the island has had inhabitants for millennia. Okay, so now we're catching up to date. Let's ask what actually led to the war? What was the catalyst? What was the cause? Well, at this point, I very strongly believe that it was the breakup of a union. Any man who says he totally understands women is a fool because they are ununderstandable. As I mentioned previously, the war almost definitely started over the breakup of a special marriage or some form of arranged union. From what we've heard in the story so far, we can speculate the union was between Joy Boy and Lily, disturbed by a third party, which is likely Emu. Either Joy Boy and Lily were married and Emu intervened, or Emu and Lily were arranged to be married and Joy Boy intervened. Very piratey. This led to tensions between kingdoms, which ultimately broke into war. Additionally, it could be that Lily was exiled to what we now know as Amazon Lily, resulting in a seemingly lethal disease known as the Love Sickness. This also possibly led to the formation of the all-female Kuja clan. Relationships, and particularly a romantic relationship, even though often subtle in One Piece, is one of the deepest motifs in the whole story. This is embodied predominantly by Amazon Lily and the Love Sickness, suffered only by the Empress of the Kuja, but there are also countless other references to weddings, for example, most recently with the cover page featuring Sanji serving wedding cake to a pair of mice, one black and one white. The colours here represent the duality and the polar opposites of the pair, most likely a metaphor for the two sovereigns mentioned by the whales during Fishman Island, so the East and the West. 
just a couple of examples where we can see Oda pushing this idea is, for example, during Whole Cake, we had the whole Big Mum wedding cake fia fiasco and the marriage. There's a cover page with Vivi where she's scrubbing the floor and there's cats that are holding a sign saying bride to be. Sanji is in like a couple of wedding covers, as we know. There's a cover page where Nami has plenty of suitors around her. And there's also this conversation between Cobra and Vivi where Cobra's trying to get Vivi to accept some of the suitors so that she can get married. With that said, I believe the marriage was disturbed and this is the event that led to war. Now, I believe 16 tribes fought against each other in a worldwide war which put eight tribes from the east against eight tribes from the west with the red line eventually solidifying the border and separating the two worlds. Again, we see the two eights featured, which together makes 16. I do think that massive casualties took place as the war raged, explaining why there's frozen giants beneath Punk Hazard and the mass grave at Whiskey Peak. But there does seem to be more to this because a consistent feature with these graves appears to be cold is likely a way to preserve Will, as we saw with Emu in the Straw Hat and now we've got Kuzan and Gar. During the war, it's possible Devil Fruits and other similar powers were established and developed to be used in the war. For example, an idea Mr. Bushido has is that zone fruits were created to combat minks, or it may even be possible the zone fruits came from experimenting on imprisoned minks that have been taken throughout the war. Some fruits seem to tie to specific people or races. For example, the pawpaw fruit seems inherently connected to the buccaneers and their history. This fruit in particular is also relevant to the void century as we can assume there is a great displacement of peoples as the world changed its geography and climate. Another devil fruit that stands out is the sun god Nika fruit, previously known as the Gomu. The Gorosei mentioned the last time they knew of this fruit's existence was 800 years ago. However, this fruit gives the user the ability to conjure whatever they imagine into reality. But this is then reflected in some other characters, such as Bonnie who can change her form using a mysterious technique named Distorted Future. We also see it with the classic Nami gag where she can always hurt Luffy. This might suggest that some people had the ability to turn their imagination into reality naturally or in other words, had powers without a devil fruit. It's possible the devil fruits were formulated by the world government as weaponry to take on this kind of technology, ultimately using the ancient kingdom's technology against them by making the devil fruits. I believe this also reflects how the ancient weapons became known as weapons also, as they were probably previously advanced technology that were rebranded by the world government to further convince the world the ancient kingdom was a threat and they are in fact constructive technology. Potentially the ancient weapons were hidden by Joy Boy and his allies in order to prevent the world government finding and utilizing. For example, I've long since thought that Lily leaked the location of Pluton to Joy Boy and Joy Boy moved Pluton from Alabaster to Wano and subsequently Emu then used some sort of dance powder or the rain machine to lift the water from Alabaster, which is why it's dry and then dump it in the Wano that had the barriers up, causing it to flood. Uranus and the other ancient weapons, cataclysmic events started taking place globally, reshaping the world into what we see today. Additionally, it appears as though this led to the fragmentation, destruction and extinction of the ancient kingdom. Although some remnants do still exist, such as poneglyphs, which are hidden out and around the world, whereas other artifacts have been secured and hidden by the world government, as we mentioned with the Straw Hat Marijua. Towards the end of the war and post-war, it seems that letters were passed down through generations in order to communicate centuries old messages that revealed the dark truth of the current status quo, which we can see very clearly with Kuma's letter to Bonnie, the letter Lily had, as well as other metaphorical examples such as Kiros and Rebecca, which seems to be the primary method in perpetuating Joy Boy's will. Other than the letters, we do have some other remnants of war left over. For example, the colossal iron giant that we've seen recently, the resulting dominance that the world government have over the planet currently. Also, we see it with the strange climates and geographies. Another very strange relic we have from this time period is the Tequila Wolf Bridge. People have been building that for 700 years and it's still not reached its destination. So I'm not sure how people feel about this, but I'm convinced that that is not normal. There's something going on. Most likely that the land that is trying to reach is moving away from it. Why you might ask? Why? 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 Well, there's a lot of reasons that I can go into another time. Um, some people speculate that Emu has the Earth God fruit, so she might be the one moving the land deal between the Celestials and Emu and once that bridge reaches the other side the Celestials will be free of Emu's rule that's why Emu always prevents it however that's a conversation for another time maybe later okay 
Ultimately, however, we can agree that by the end of the Great War, Emu somehow traps people in a prison of perception, repeating the cycle until the will of Joy Boy is inevitably fulfilled and the world as Joy Boy knew it is restored. Laftail was potentially located on a great landmass called Pangaea and a part of the ancient kingdom, for example, the capital. The hole created by the Mother Flame is very similar to the Ennies Lobby hole, implying the Ennies Lobby hole was made by a similar cause, in this case, a flying superweapon. So if Uranus made that hole and the other side of the world is Reverse Mountain, the strike could have gone through the Earth and pushed up Reverse Mountain and fired whatever island was there originally into the sky. Now, the island that was originally where Reverse Mountain is now, I believe to be the original Jaya, but I've covered this in a previous video, so I'll just link it in the description. Anyway, let's talk about Laftail. It could be the location that acts as a center of this advanced technology, as we can be pretty sure at this point, Laftail holds not only the One Piece, but a comprehensive account of the history of the world in some form. The fact Roger knew he reached Laftail too early implies there's information on Laftail that, you know, indicates a time frame in which the will of D might be fulfilled. So there you have it, dude and dudettes. There's some quick speculations on the Void Sentry and what might have gone on. Huge thanks to Will of Fire, Dexter, Dill, Cube, Lucas, and of course the trusty TLA server, which always provides the spices information. Big ups yourself for getting this far in the video. You've just won yourself some free Rayleigh three-quarter khaki cargo pants. Amazon Lily edition, don't make me say that again. Drop a comment where you want them delivered and what you thought of the video. And lastly, ask yourself, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Much love, take it easy, and peace.